my awesome thing is the Audi Virtual Reality Experience. Ooh, I saw this like around like recently. Uh, but uh, yeah, you tell me about this. You're of course, like, you're Mr. Audi. Let, yes. Let's be honest. Yes. You're, you're I'm like an Audi fanatic. I run the social oh, yeah. media for the Audi Club of uh, Western Pennsylvania. Um, basically, you tell me what chassis code you have, and I can tell you the different engine options and all different kinds of fun tidbits like that, and how it does on do track a, and whatnot. Do they have a cardboard app as well? Uh, not sure if they have a cardboard app yet. Need hmm. to look into that. Def- definitely something worthwhile because then you know you have your Audi branded cardboard that you can take home from the dealer. There you go. Mm. It's good marketing. It is good marketing, but it looks like they give you a little bit more than that for this, right? Yeah. So what they do, you go to the dealer and uh, they set you up with a set of uh, Bang & Olufsen and headphones and also an HT- HTC uh, Vive or oh, Oculus. I think it's Vive. Vive? Okay. Um, and uh, they load up whatever car you're looking at. So, you know, obviously they want to use the Halo car for all the uh, various things that they're showing off, so they set it up for the R8 V10. Mm-hmm. So what it does is it lets you say, okay, well, you know, that's a nice uh, blue R8, but, you know, I want to see what it looks like in that nice uh, shiny red that you have. And then they hit a button, all of a sudden the car's red. Well, I don't like those wheels. I want this other wheel option. And then they can change uh, the wheel option, and you're able just to walk around the car and see what it looks like with those various options. But the interesting thing is it goes beyond just the exterior experience, or, yeah exterior appearance so uh you know you get all these different options for different types of leather uh different uh you know brushed aluminum inlays carbon fiber inlays on the interior all these different finite details well they actually went so far as to model the entire car so that uh you just basically move in to where your head would be in the car and you're able to look around like you're sitting in the car Hmm. and you can adjust all these different settings on the fly to see how uh, their virtual dashboard looks, you know, relative to whichever kind of, uh, you, know, you know, material you pick for the seats or the headliner or all that stuff. And uh, it says that you can even go in and, you know, move your head around where the engine would be and see the inner bits of the engine compartment just to see all that nightmarish work that you may have to do if, you know, you're a masochist like me and you decide to work on your own Audi. But they're going to work on loading all the different uh, vehicles in their model line, all 52 of them, with all the various options into this program so that you're able just to walk around and see what your next Audi would look like in person at mm-hmm. the dealer. I, I, we're pulling up some video. Um, I, I forget where this is from, uh, from CES apparently. And this guy is like looking at the tire and looking in the trunk and everything. And he was like crawling around on the ground. <laughs> pretty significantly uh i presume this is what the htc vibe that's uh, that's coming out um but that, that that you mentioned before yeah so so you see how his head's basically where the engine is and you see the internals of the engine i'm waiting for this guy to run right into the wall and, that, and that's what i was going to bring up too because with the vr goggles this is the hardest thing to get through is the spatial relationship without being able to see through anything i mean he's lucky he's not i'm surprised he's not either misjudging the floor and falling to the floor or trying to fall through the floor it, it's and i was wondering because you look at the case that they give you and there's a device kind of in the center of, of that case with the with the headphones and the um goggles i'm surprised they don't have it where this is some kind of i can sit stationary and use a controller to move myself without actually having to get up and move around the room because mm-hmm. the other the interesting thing is is look there's a cable attached to him. Mm-hmm. It's like up in the <laughs> middle. Like it's like it's like strung to the middle of the room. Like as as a customer, this is this would have to be a really hard sell for me to want to do this versus just show me the darn car. And I do, and I do feel like I do feel like that's one of those like things we're working on a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it, it's an interesting problem. But um, and also that's not a final version of the vibe that they're using there at CES, and that was like uh, about two months ago. So they're using some kind of specialized one that goes to a big, powerful computer that's not finalized hardware, not the right, you know, stuff. And I, and I don't know what I can't remember what all the hookup is for an HTC Vive, but uh, and I think that one is supposed to be a little bit more made to roam around uh, than than what you see with the Oculus, which everything I've done with the Oculus so far has been more or less a um, sit down experience. So 
I don't know. It, it, that's awesome. Of course, Audi it, it, or any other car. I, I don't know if you if you're on audio. Uh, we I think we could mostly describe kind of what's happening on the video. Uh, but there's also a part of this where you're on the moon. So uh, if you want to take your audio on the moon, there yeah, you go. pick the background where you think your car would look best and uh-huh. just roll with it. There you go. So there you go. That's on the moon. All yeah. right. Are do you know? Are any other car dealerships um, um, venturing into this that you're aware of? Um, not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure that. Uh, you know, if anything, at least, uh, the other two that make up the big three of Germany are going to follow suit BMW and Mercedes. Mm -hmm. I think Mercedes actually has been toying around with something similar to this. Uh, I'm not sure about BMW, but I can definitely see this being the norm for those kind of, uh, for those car brands, because, you know, it, it's one thing, um, you know, to, uh, to what Chilla said about, you know, just go in and, you know, just look at the car. Yeah. Well, whenever you go into a dealer, say like a Hyundai or a Chevy dealer, where you know everything's basically cut and dry, there's nothing too elaborate there. Um, you know, you're going to find all of the options there. Well, you go into an Audi dealer, you know, they they have leather packages that cost seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and that's something that you know, if they aren't certain that that's going to sell. You know, you aren't going to spend the extra eight thousand dollars just to have that cut of leather in the showroom. And the same with like the ten thousand dollar stereo that comes in the SUV. You know, some of these options are very expensive options, so it makes sense to you know be able to see the really, really you know top cut type things. It's like you're not really going to get your hands on the fifteen thousand dollar Apple Watch, but uh, it's nice to see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, awesome. 